Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's me Lady Decades and thank you for coming back to my channel once again. It's very nice to see you all. You're all looking very dapper indeed. And I get to say that because as far as I'm aware I've only got one female viewer who is the wife of one of my commenters from my previous video. So shout out to you my, my one lady companion for this channel. Well anyway, basically the reason I'm here today is because I've just read quite a fascinating article on the Forbes um, website which came up in my Twitter feed earlier and has absolutely shocked me so I actually felt the need to come and talk about it because I literally don't know what to make of it. Right, so basically this Forbes article um, is outlining this extremely rare Sega arcade cabinet which has been found abandoned in the middle of a field in Northern Ireland and what this particular cabinet is is a really 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 important piece of gaming history which has just been left in a field obviously by someone who hasn't got a clue what it was and why it was wherever it was for them to feel the need to pick it up and dump it and fly tip it into the middle of a field which I might add is actually a crime in Britain to do that so I'm sure it's probably a crime in Northern Ireland too being a part of the United Kingdom so yes this piece of kit is a Sega R360 which is a humongous humongous piece of kit which was um, basically the first of its kind it was a humongous gyroscopic arcade cabinet whereby you could essentially climb inside of it strap yourself into the chair and spin around in all directions except obviously for things like upside down which was obviously restricted for health and safety reasons but yeah there was 200 of these made um, and it debuted in Japan in late 1990 so we're talking here a 30 odd year old piece of equipment where, which there was only 200 of it made and it's found absolutely rotting to pieces in a field like oh the mind boggles the mind absolutely boggles so this machine was basically so niche that there was only ever two games that were made for it so one of them was a spin-off from afterburner which was called g-lock air battle and the other game was called wing war so i'm guessing off the back of that because i've actually never seen one of these machines in real life but i'm guessing this is one of those machines that you could climb inside and then essentially control almost like an aircraft and be able to spin around um and i'm pretty sure that i've been able to um actually use a similar type of arcade cabinet um when we went to uh, fun spot in new hampshire so it would have been a really cool piece of equipment but yeah two games made for it ever so that just shows just how rare this game was and probably at the time not the easiest to find developers to create games for so this particular r360 um was allegedly the star attraction of um, one of the ulster arcades but yeah basically um from what the article says um, the arcade itself closed down at some point in the 90s and this R360 had been moved to a shed belonging to a nearby farmer but was never ever collected so it's just sat there for nearly 30 years until someone suddenly decided oh don't need that anymore don't know what that is let's just let's just get rid of it but, and like the person who wrote the article said you know, some people just do not know trash from treasure it kind of reminds me of when since spacey's managed to find a huge um, sonic statue just rotting on um in the back garden of um, a hoarder somewhere near sydney in australia and he went on this huge mission to try to get it it's, it's kind of like that situation i just again the mind absolutely boggles like some people just really do not know what it is that they have I mean, what an important piece of hardware, and it's just 
been left rotting in a field. So what I think is actually even more surprising is that of the few R360s which were within the UK, it was quite surprising that there was one of these units which was essentially not quite within the um, English borders. So the fact that it was over in um, Northern Ireland in itself is um, quite interesting. I mean, it would have been, I suppose, probably no, no more difficult getting it over to Northern Ireland than it would have been getting it to England in the first place. But still, um, most of the um, R360s that were within England were in Sega World in London. So how Ulster Arcades managed to get their hands on one. I mean, must have cost you, you. You've got to think how much money that would have cost them to purchase in the first place. It's quite an impressive feat. The one today had to close down. They went bankrupt. Went bankrupt after buying it. So, I think the main the main conclusion that came from this article is that this um, particular R three hundred and sixty has been undiscovered for such a long time, and has been subjected to the terrible terrible weather that Britain is famous for but Northern Ireland in particular being so close to the North the North Atlantic Ocean um, and it's just it is so totally beyond repair that it's just it will never ever ever be in a situation where it can be restored so I suppose at best someone perhaps Lee Peters himself might be able to take it and just to keep it. I don't know. Like, what, what, what do you do with something like that? I, we, we've got lots and lots of games here. I've got lots of games in protectors because I understand what it is that I've got and I understand the importance of keeping it clean and looking after it properly and so on and so forth. Um, so this actually brings me on to um, when when I was younger, so when I was um, 18, 19 years old, I used to work in a social club, literally literally just behind the bar pulling, pulling pints and, and that. And um, the owner of the place that I worked in, her name was Wendy, and she was this absolutely lovely, lovely, lovely elderly lady who had moved here from Hong Kong and she um, literally had locked up in her leaky shed in her back garden an old pac-man table top arcade cabinet and she was not looking after it i mean it was battered but it wasn't beyond repair it wasn't beyond restoration but she would not sell that because she kept saying to me oh no no that's that's gonna be worth money one day i'm not gonna sell it to you i'm not gonna sell it to you it's gonna be worth money one day and i just was like it's not gonna be worth any money if you keep it rotting if you're gonna leave it in there dying fill, filling up with spiders webs and rust and i mean god knows what the what all of the gubbings inside of it must look like I don't ever try to explain electronics to me i'm not interested i know that you use a soldering iron and i know you have to put bits here there and everywhere and but no don't don't i didn't do well with electronics in school but i still understand enough that water plus med plus metal equals bad british weather plus important items like that equals bad <laughs> i understand that enough but yeah so i don't I, I don't really know what else to add really apart from that i'm horrified about this i i find the whole thing shocking and it's mental that someone had a piece of kit in their shed on their farm which was 2200 pounds i mean that's like that's like two and a half thousand pound sisters nearly <laughs> The mental you have to think how huge that was and the effort it must have taken them to remove that from their storage shed and dump it somewhere else like the amount of effort they must have gone to they must have needed a, a cherry picker or, or how how would they have got that and moved it and then dumped it oh. like the logistics of it blow my mind like i, I wish that i could have been there to 
to see it happen. Just mental. And why would they not look into it first? Why would they think, um, let's just get rid of that huge thing there? Why would they not think, oh, I better go to an auction house and see whether I can get an expert to come round? Or, oh, I better see if I can get in touch with some kind of arcade company or, or some kind of amusements company to see whether they will come and collect it and take it away from me. But no, no, they just think, Oh, that's in the way. I could do with that space. That's huge. I better get some kind of huge forklift truck or, or, or some kind of some kind of huge heavy machinery, some piece of heavy artillery almost, to get rid of that just so I can have that bit of space back. But I don't get people. I, I literally I don't get people. But anyway, Lee Peters, excellent find. I'm just gutted for you, I'm gutted for the world that this amazing piece of equipment is just wrecked, destroyed, dead, it is no more, <laughs> it is an ex-parrot, <laughs> Jesus. Well anyway, thank you once again for coming back to my channel and listening to me rattle on. If you liked this video, hit the like button. If you're here and you enjoyed this video and you've not been here before, hit subscribe and that notification bell. If you're on any social media, I use Twitter at Lady Decade. I'm also on Instagram at Lady underscore Decade. Um, if there is uh, anything you'd like to discuss with me, then by all means, send me a tweet. Give me a follow on there as well. But um, yeah, or leave me a comment down below. And then I, I might read it and I might respond to you. But yeah, okay, I will see you all again next time. Thank you for stopping by. It was lovely to see you gorgeous lots once again. Goodbye.